Millions of 3D printers use aluminium heated beds, and for good reason. They're cheap, easily sourceable, have high thermal transfer, and have an integrated heater. They're basically giant circuit boards. There's also not really anything wrong with them, unless you want to print faster on your bed slinger, which I do. This is a series I'd like to make where I'd eventually replace all the stock parts on my Ender 3 and then decide, is it still an Ender 3? We'll get there. In this scenario, I want to print faster, but let's broaden that. When we want something to go faster, let's say a car, what do we do? There's usually a few options, a larger engine, less drag, or a lower mass. Since I want to use the stock stepper motors, and drag isn't really an issue at this scale, mass is what we'll be focusing on, and we'll be using carbon fiber to do just that much like a certain someone. I also want to mention that this experiment was inspired by the LH Stinger, which is most likely the best looking i3 style machine and most engineered as well. It uses a carbon fiber bed and Y-axis gantry, making for a ton of reduced weight. I should replace the gantry on the Ender 3 too, but I realized that a little bit late. Regardless, the plan is to uninstall the current heated bed, mount this carbon fiber sheet, which is actually a bit smaller than what I ordered, and then test the new max acceleration values we can achieve. Turns out there's a super cool clipper macro that makes the bed move forward and back at higher excels every time, enabling us to audibly know when the motors can't keep up, and visually too when they start skipping. By finding the max stock values and comparing them to the final ones, we can identify how much of an improvement the carbon fiber made, and then justify if it was worth the time, money, and effort. Let's get to it. Now, you may be already able to notice the problem, and that is that this carbon fiber sheet is too small. I ordered 250 by 300, unfortunately I was shipped 200 by 300, which means that I can't use this, which is really upsetting because it's the perfect dimension. Can we do a transition? There we go. And I would install this on the uh, broken 3D printer, but unfortunately it fits on the Ender 3 and not on the broken printer. Ender 3 it is. All right, let's get those uh, acceleration values. We've got the values here for the different um, shapers, but let's put it into a graph, as these are the max recommended accelerations for the y-axis. Where input shaper finds the highest results that you can print with with good quality, this mode just tests how fast I can push the steppers before they lose steps. So now the value is 10,707 versus 12,177. So obviously there's 2,000 steps difference, so. Yeah, we heard it skipping though. I didn't think about it earlier, but if I could replace this with carbon fiber, that would be a huge benefit. I think I might do that for part two. Wow, that's a lot more. I'm curious how much the Y-axis gantry weighs, because if I replace that with carbon fiber, it'll be a huge improvement. The V-rolls are still attached, but I don't want to misalign the uh, tension, so I'm just going to... So in total, this thing weighs like 700 grams. I think we could reduce it down to like 300. That would be incredible. And these are an extra 46 grams. Maybe we could design lighter ones. They're already pretty light. Hmm. This won't be fully precise, but until I can get this machined, it's, it'll work. Speaking of machining, PCBWay can do that and more. 
I've tested their SLA resin printing with excellent results and I've been blown away with their SLM metal 3D printing capabilities. Whether your parts need to be lightweight, strong or both, PCBWay has many services and materials ready to help you with your projects. A one-off prototype or a few thousand final models is no problem for them to make. Find them, first link in the description. It's not perfect, but it doesn't really need to be at the moment. Once again, no skipping. Fifteen thousand XL again, five hundred millimeters per second velocity. It struggled before, so if it can't keep up now, the max is fourteen thousand five hundred, which is like a forty-five percent improvement. Not bad. Weird. So it's having no problems now at 15k. I'm trying 17,500 now. It's struggling a little bit, but only a little. Okay, now we're doing 17,000 XL. Looking at the numbers, we seem to have lost maybe a couple of steps. So I'm guessing the limit is more like 16,800 or something like that. Let's do the input shaping now. This is super cool. So I'll just go over this. So previously with the aluminum bed, the maximum acceleration on ZV was a 6,400. That was the recommended value. With the carbon fiber one, it's 14,200. And MZV is 4,100 compared to the 3,800. So that's, a, that's an improvement. So that's awesome seeing that actually reflected in the, in the data. So what's the conclusion here? Realistically, if you want that much performance out of your bed slinger, it's an option alongside stronger motors, which is probably the better one. However, the cost of the raw sheet without the milling and the silicone heater are looking to be at least double the cost, if not triple that of an aluminium bed. Don't get me wrong, the performance is great, but a Quirk's white printer with the bed only moving in the Z or not at all like a Voron is the way to go. This was a fun project though, so I hope I provided at least some entertainment or better yet, some insight into high performance 3D printing. If you have any feedback or comments, I'm always keen to hear. It's important in these engineering videos that I get things right. So if I don't, which I, that kind of happens a lot, try and help me know better for next time. That is all for today though, so thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you again soon.